And let's assume this patient came to you, you are the person called, what you are really interested to know? So first of all, this is a seven year old girl presented with pain and redness in the right eye for two days. So first of all, uh, the age is important. Uh, she's seven years old, so she's a child. Uh, also, I would ask about the uh, duration of symptoms, if it's uh, the first time of, uh, of occurrence or previously this ha happened to the patient. Uh, the rate of uh, progression, if it's uh, the same since it began or uh, it's worsening. Uh, there is also pain. Uh, this is uh, important as well. If it's pain, painful or uh, pain uh, Yeah, so the history is important. And then I would uh, proceed with the examination. Uh, if there is... Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, if there is limitation of extraocular movement, uh, if there is uh, pain with the um, eye movement, if there is decreased vision, uh, uh, if there is uh, constitutional symptoms, also I would ask about this, uh, like uh, weight loss, fever, anorexia, or, uh, uh, night sweating. Uh, I would also examine uh, the lymph node uh, of the patient, uh, see a systematic review if there is uh, respiratory symptoms, if there is... Uh, uh, like uh, occurrence with uh, uh, valsalva, like coughing, or uh, when the patient cries, it would increase. Uh, also, I would ask about uh, a history of trauma, if the patient had uh, like a recent trauma, and by uh, recent surgeries. Uh, That's yeah. very good. Uh, the, the child was healthy, very healthy, like, Three days ago, she started to have upper respiratory tract infection with fever. Then she developed this uh, eye, uh, eye manifestation with the pain and uh, bulging in the eye. You examine the examination shows uh, some there is fever and there's some limitation in eye mortality. And um, otherwise, the rest of examination is fine, apart from what you see in the proptosis and globe uh, transposition or dystopia. What you what you will do as a next step after examination and uh, and the clinical evaluation? What's the next step? I would do imaging. Okay. What kind of imaging you will do? Uh, first of all, I would order CT as the initial uh, test. Why not MRI? Hmm. So uh, I think CT, if there's like a, a bony involvement, uh, it would uh, it would show it uh, clearly. Like if there is uh, uh, any uh, bone uh, involvement, I would see it clearly. But MRI absolutely would be a better choice for uh, soft tissue. Uh, yeah, because in this case, we are not concerned about trauma or something that we, we really need bone for. So you can say imaging, either MRI or CT scan. Um, yes. Before we go for imaging, sometimes it's good to examine the mouth and other things just to make sure we are not missing other source for infection in this child, okay? Yes, absolutely. I would do also um, like lab, uh, lab investigation like CBC and uh, thyroid uh, 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 Thyroid maybe is not, with this clinical presentation, would be high priority. Uh, we'll, we'll, the, we'll do, anyway, we did CT scan for her since it's available in our hospital. So what... Can you describe what the end think is going on? So this is a, a coronal cut um, of uh, uh, the orbit. Uh, it shows in the right eye there is a, um, like a, a homogeneous uh, uh, nasal uh, uh, nasal mass, um, and there is also uh, clear. Uh, clear muscle uh, insertion. There is no alarm of the muscle, basically. Uh, and uh, this is uh, like, uh, uh, it involves as well the inferior, uh, the maxillary uh, sinus. Uh, and this is for me as the, the bony window. So uh, I would also see the uh, soft tissue window so you could evaluate more. Yeah. Maybe this is a soft tissue window. How you know that's the soft tissue window or bone window? You look at the bone. You see the bone here. You didn't see the details of the bone, isn't it? Yes. So, so this is soft tissue window. 
Um, what you can see, as you nicely mentioned, that there is a thmoidal sinus involvement and the maxillary sinus, and there is orbital involvement. As you can see, this this the, it's, it's it's a little bit heterogeneous. If you look at the the content here or the appearance here, is different than the appearance here, isn't it? Yes, sir. This, this is more of a fluid, and this is more of a fluid. You agree? I agree. Yes. So, what does this represent? Um. Could it be the uh, like a uh, 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 blood or uh, no? This is sinus problem coming to the orbit. So what's this can abscess? be? Abscess. Abscess. Yeah, this is subarachnoid abscess. Okay. Yes. Yes. And you can see there is subarachnoid abscess, and the orbit uh, structure surrounding the abscess is important too because this action and inflammatory condition. So this yeah. is like an, an orbital involvement with subarachnoid abscess. So what's your diagnosis? Uh, orbital uh, cellulitis. Orbital with cellulitis <laughs> with subarachnoid abscess, secondary yeah. to uh, acute uh, ethmoidal sinusitis and maxillary sinusitis. How you manage this patient? Uh, for the management, uh, antibiotic, uh, uh, first of all, I would have to uh, see the condition of the patient. I would admit absolutely, since he's a child, uh, admission is a choice. Um, a systemic antibiotics uh, uh, that covers uh, both gram positive and gram negative, vancomycin and sifta uh, zodim. Uh, but usually in children, it's a monoorganism. So uh, we give the treatment for uh, uh, 40 eight hours so if there is no improvement uh, that time uh, I would consider maybe subperiosteal abscess uh, drainage uh, also if it's very large uh, the patient is systematically uh, ill I would consider the drainage okay I agree with you will need to be admitted for close observation so we need to see the patient frequently during admission uh, if you have um, access to pediatrician, uh, I mean, sorry, ENT is good to inform them in the management because the problem started in the sinuses and it's spilled over to the orbit. And also, maybe you discuss the antibiotic choice with the infectious disease group if you have. That's, that will help you to reach the best antibiotic choice. But what you mentioned is the correct. Sometimes we add for it clindamycin. It depends on the situation. But what you mentioned as IV antibiotic is really appropriate. So you will, you, will, you will observe the patient for 48 hours. If there is improvement, you will continue on antibiotics. If there is no improvement, we need to go for the advanced as you mentioned, to drain the abscess and also maybe possible for the sinus drainage if it's needed. Uh, anyway, this patient was admitted close observation and she did well without any uh, surgical intervention with just medical treatment, the abscess resolved, even the ethmoidal sinusitis improved after giving nasal decongestant and some topical treatment for the nose. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The, the good thing that we mentioned since we are talking about children and adults, usually the, the sinus disease in children is acute and doesn't recur. And that's why the orbitocellitis course and modal sinusitis course is more benign in children. In adult, typically the sinusitis is more of a sick sinuses, so they have tendency more to recurrence compared to pediatric, and this is the differential, I mean, one of the differential, uh, differentiating between adult uh, child, uh, between adult and children orbital cellulitis. So the sinuses in, in children usually just acute patient resolved treatment, but, well, but in adult, it may be recurrent uh, sinusitis. Yes. Clear? Yes, clear. I have a question, Doc. Would you uh, uh, sure. start the patient to uh, uh -huh. start the patient on steroids or no? Uh, like uh, uh, two days after the uh, antibiotics? So then steroid doesn't affect the final outcome, but it makes the duration of admission shorter. So if you give a steroid instead of staying, for example, seven days to have the symptoms completely and the clinical picture completely resolved, it may go after five, uh, five days. So I, I, after one day, if I see that it's not deteriorating, I start steroid. Some doctors, they don't start, so it's still controversial. It's no, it's a no clear guideline for it, but I'm more toward giving a steroid after passing the first day without really uh, marks worsening of their symptoms or clinical findings. Great. Thank you, Bob.
يعطيك العافيه في اي سؤال ثاني دكتوره الله يعطيك العافيه في اي سؤال ثاني من الزملاء قبل ما نروح الحاله اللي بعدها بروف ذير از ا كويشن ان ذا تشات مشكله خلينا نطلع على الشات عندي مش ما هو اي ويل منشن ات اها What's the rate of recurrence in children? Usually, the children is really, really rare. صراحة يمكن ما شفت يعني طول الفترة الماضية ما I'm not aware of a case that came with the recurrence. In literature, I'm not aware of a certain figure, but as we mentioned that in in children, usually acute problem resolved after treatment with antibiotics. The sinus disease is not. It's not a chronic disease that uh, tend to recur. And it's really, um, it's not a, a disease that we worried much about in children. My prof has a question from Yasser Saleh. He said, can we go for drainage directly since it's large subterranean asbestos in this case? Uh, well, in this case, maybe um, it's, it's, uh, it's not, for me, it's not that large. What you see is more of, Inflammation reaction. This is a re reaction of the orbital tissue. This is the abscess. So it's not considered real large. This may be a moderate size, and it's nasal. And the patient is uh, will be monitor monitored closely. So treatment with antibiotics, and in, in many studies, show that it's going to be enough to treat these patients. If it's superior abscess, or the patient came with other sign indicating, for example, cavernous sinus involvement. Yes, I will go for it. But for this presentation with this uh, clinical finding, medical treatment uh, as a start will be really appropriate. Okay, Prof, uh, I have a question in this case. If, if you decided to go for surgical uh -huh. drainage, uh, what do you prefer, the uh, uh, nasal uh, approach or external approach? It depends. If the ENT doctor want, they want to do Drainage for the abs and the, for the maxillary science at module science, you can do the endoscopic approach. If they are not really interested to do the sinus treatment uh, surgically, uh, I will do a transcranial approach. Maybe you, you attended, we, we did uh, maybe two last week a case of uh, orbital decompression together. Uh, draining the abscess is way easier than the compression that we did together. Okay. Any question? So this is a question from uh, Dr. Abdus Salam Tayri. He says, uh, optic neuropathy in young adult, could it be uh, infiltrative rather than compressive? Uh, it depends. If it's fungal infection, most likely going to be infiltrative. I mean, mucormycosis. But if in these cases, more uh, compressive with secondary involvement inflammation because you know if you leave the, the infection to continue it will lead to orbital abscess and that will cause inflammation marked inflammation that may affect the optic nerve by compression and also possible by infiltration but with fungal sinus uh, invasive fungal sinusitis is mainly by invasion i hope i answered my question his question yes uh, there is no more question regarding this case prof but we need a second year resident any second year resident volunteering? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu rahmatullah. Rakan al Aisa. Oh, hayakala rakan. Klaamu tul khair. Manta tul khair, prof. Rakan, let us assume that you are the in call on this child. I think he is eight year old boy. He came to you because of pain and redness started yesterday in his right eye. Before that, he was okay. So I will start uh, with the history. Uh, so it, he has pain. Uh, I will ask if, he has, if there is associated with decrease in vision, if he, has, uh, if he is having any diplopia, uh, if the family notice any fever. Uh, also, I will ask if the patient has a history of sinusitis, uh, dental procedures, uh, history of upper, recent upper respiratory tract infection, um, any previous history of uh, surgeries or traumas, also, we'll ask if this is recurrent or first time. Um, and I will ask if uh, he has any past medical history of autoimmune diseases, for example. Okay, all the, all the previous one was negative. So no previous uh, surgery, trauma, sinusitis, or other problem before. No, no, 
no decrease of vision, but he cannot open his eye wall and it's really painful. Then I will proceed with the exam. Um, I would like to examine uh, the VA first, the IOB, uh, the mortality, um, ABD, uh, visual field. Uh, then I will examine uh, the lid uh, for swelling, uh, uh, redness, uh, warm. Uh, uh, then the lamp examination, including object nerve examination. Yeah, you can see the mortality in the exam. Uh, the rest of examination, optic nerve examination was normal, and uh, slit lamp examination was normal. And he's uh, slightly feverish. He's not real uh, febrile. Mm -hmm. So I can see the, the eye mortality. He has a restriction in um, up gaze. The right eye compared to the left eye. That's very good. Mm -hmm. Then we can proceed, uh, after the complete examination, we can proceed with the imaging. Okay. Just to show you that there's some proptosis here. This is the imaging. Okay. Uh, this is CT scan, uh, soft tissue window, uh, both axial and uh, coronal uh, cuts. By the way, Showing, uh, this is a bone window, okay? Uh, bone window, okay. You can see the bone the detail bone here. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, this is a bone window. So the, uh, the CT scan showing a uh, superior temporal uh, well-defined uh, mass. It looks like a subperiosteal uh, lesion with some fluid under the subperiosteum. Uh, also, in the uh, axial cut, we can see uh, uh, some enhancement of the bone marrow or the sphenoid bone. So what do you think? Uh, this could be uh, in part to the uh, sphenoid bone. Um, when, when this is the patient, the child, I would think about sickle cell anemia, try to occlude the diseases. That's very good. And this is his uh, 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 MRI. MRI, you typically we don't use it to see bone, but in this condition we use it because you can see the bone marrow enhancement here compared to the other side. This is normal bone marrow and this is enhanced bone marrow. And yeah. what you see here is because of the infarction and the bone marrow, there will be extravasation of the fluid and that mm -hmm. will lead to um, accumulation of the fluid in the subarostal space. So this patient is having sickle cell disease and this is infarction of the bone marrow. That's really good. How you treat them? Um, main treatment, of course, admission, and I, we can start a systemic steroid. And if he has uh, signs of infection like fever, leukocytosis, we can also start him on IV antibiotics with, with the closed observation. Whenever we find um, there is compression on the optic nerve, the VA is decreasing, the visual field is restricted, uh, motility is uh, getting worse, then we can uh, drain this uh, fluid. That's very good. And also maybe a part of the treatment for uh, phasoclusive or, or a sickle crisis to hydration because hydration improves the, uh, the, the dynamic of the blood flow and that will help hopefully uh, improving his condition. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. After medical treatment alone, he improved and he did very well. Nice. This is his picture after. Uh, one of the things that you mentioned before, but I don't to say this patient, we reported him as a second attack of phasoclusive crisis and bone marrow in the same place. So he had it twice. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any question? Mashallah, well done, Rakan. Allah Hafiz, Prof. Any questions so far? Moderator Mohanad. No, no more questions, Prof. We can proceed. No questions. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. If anyone wants to participate, he can raise his hand. If the man had it, Prof. I will choose. Okay. Right. Uh, this is. Um, huh? Walid Sarhani wants to. Walid, uh, Sadli Masak. Hello, Hello, Prof. Lahik. Walid, this uh, lady came to the emergency room because of pain and redness in her right eye. 
for almost uh, three days duration. Uh, she's known to be diabetic. Control the blood sugar is يعني, a little bit not can be better. Otherwise, she's okay. Uh, so I can see uh, cryptos is the right eye with uh, some kind of tablet injections. Uh, so I would like to know uh, if there can be any fever, any previous uh, uh, sinus disease or sinus surgery. If there can be any dental infections. I know. Trauma. No, just it started all of a sudden. Any other medical issues apart from diabetes? No. طيب ممتاز. Then I'll move on to examination. Madam, the medical history is يعني unremarkable. I I would check for VA, IOP, APD as well. Check color vision, visual field, dilated fundus examination to check the the fundus. In this case, since the patient is diabetic. I would also do some nasal examination to look for any uh, ish card. Okay, that's very good. Uh, examination was okay, apart from um, some mild limitation and up gaze. Uh, okay. Otherwise, um, yeah, the rest of examination, okay. If in front of the exam was okay, no diabetic retinopathy. The nasal exam, oral exam was okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll proceed with imaging in this case. Okay. This is a motility, just to show you that there's some limitation, but not that great. And this is her imaging. So uh, this is a coronal uh, T2, uh, showing some uh, Soft tissue, uh -huh. especially uh, the inferior part around the inferior rectus. Okay, what else? Uh, the extracral muscles are, are uh, enlarged, especially the inferior rectus as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't see any sinus uh, disease. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. What else? Uh, there is uh, some enhancement at the lacrimal area. Um, maybe not that much. You mean here? Yeah. Oh. But there are other things that maybe it's good to comment on. Maybe you're not familiar much with it. That's why I brought this case to draw your attention to. I shift the end. The legs, rocker muscles are 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 enlarged. That's very good. What else? There is something else. I don't see any any. There is like. Uh, soft tissue swelling at uh, around the optic nerve. Yeah, this one you mean? Eh? This optic nerve is okay, but the prob there is a problem in both orbits. So. Yeah, I shift the extracular muscles are both large in both orbits. Hey, what else? If you had a large in both orbits, that gives you a really good clue to what's going on. Uh, Lymphotrochlear nerve? Mm, more infratrochlear orbit. Do you see it clear? Yeah. So what, this is to give you a clue for the diagnosis. You see the infraorbital nerve here? Yes. And you see this infraorbital nerve? Yes. So what's the diagnosis? IDG, most likely. IgG4 related disease. Yeah, this most likely. So how you diagnose patient with IgG4? Uh, so IgG4 uh, related disease, you need a histopathology diagnosis. However, the clue here is the enlargement of the infraorbital uh, nerve. Uh, so we need to do uh, CBC, ESR, CRP, uh, IgG4 level. We need to do uh, rule out sarcoidosis. We need to do a slice uh, lysozyme. 
uh, Wagner, Anka, uh, and then uh, take biopsy uh, to confirm the diagnosis. That's very good. Just to make it easy how you diagnose, if you read in the literature, there is a little bit of detail. So I, I brought this diagram for you. It's really easy and nice. It's the that you need to, there is something called comprehensive diagnostic criteria. You mentioned uh, the serum level of IgG4 should be more than uh, 135 milligram per decibel. And in the histopathology, this is when you do, when you, when you want really a good uh, definitive diagnosis, you need to do a histopathology. And the IgG4 level offer IgG uh, levels in the histopathology should be more than 40% IgG4. And also you need to have organ involvement. And here we have uh, uh, the orbit. But also, why we are talking about IgG4? Because it involves other organs. And the most uh, uh, really people talking about is uh, pancreatitis, uh, cholangitis, uh, kidneys, and lungs. So the IgG4 disease may affect different uh, parts of the body. And uh, that's why we, we, we talk about IgG4. Because if a patient is diagnosed with IgG4 disease, we need to really prepare them to internist and tell them about the diagnosis so they can screen them for other uh, organ involved. Yes. You agree? So how you treat this patient? Uh, so uh, this patient, uh, after a confirmed diagnosis, I need to put the patient on uh, uh, steroids uh, and uh, uh, other immunosuppressants. Uh, rituximab is effective in, in IgG4 related cases. That's good. Most of these patients, they respond to uh, really steroid. If it's not, involved, if it's not uh, really uh, responding to us, which is really happen, you need to start other uh, amino uh, mediator, amino suppression, depends on the situation. And also it's good to put them in uh, steroid sparing agents because you need to treat the patient for long duration. Okay. Any questions so far? Waleed? Hey, Namsan. The IgG4 started in Japan when they talk about it. Most of the presentation came from Asia. Uh, it's more prevalent in, that, in their area compared to our area, but we see it in Saudi Arabia. I've seen maybe three or four patients so far. So the, this is one of the patients I saw, and there are a couple of patients also with IgG4 that we have seen in the, here in Saudi Arabia. So it's not a disease that we don't see. And also it's been reported from different parts of the world. So it's not only in Japan or uh, uh, East Asia. Wadah Yasser? Any questions so far? Prof, uh, but I have a question. Um, if we're unable to do the uh, the biopsy, uh, can we uh, establish the diagnosis if the best can end in a serum IgG level high with organ involvement without the biopsy? Uh, you can say this is suggestive, but it's not definitive. If you have a definitive disease, if you want to get a definitive diagnosis, you need to have a But But very suggestive of IgG4, I would say yes. I answered my question, your question. Yes, thank you. طيب نبغى R3 السؤال هذا من يتبرع R3 بس من برا برا لا يصير من الكيسيو واحد من برا الكيسيو. طيب I can choose the prof. طب بس في قبل من هذا في سؤال يقول can we start steroid sparing agent along with steroid yes. Because the disease takes long time to control, the, meaning IgG4, so it takes time. So it's, it's a good idea to start with uh, either silsept or methotrexate along with the steroid. طبعا نبغى أعرف لي بس من من برا الكيس يقول أنا عشان ما أعرف من الحالة هذه. Okay, there is no one. If there is no one, I will choose. مهند في عبد السلام المطيري عبد السلام ونعم عبد السلام جاهز عبد السلام يا هلا حياك الله كل عام وانت بخير الله يحييك وانت بخير يا دكتور سعادك مبارك الله يا رب تبارك علينا وعليكم المسلمين جميعا 
عبد السلام الله يسعدك. This is um, I think it was 40 year old female. She was seen mm -hmm. one of the private hospital and she was admitted for orbital condition that started uh, two days ago prior to her admission. They started mm -hmm. treatment, but she just she would. They were, I mean, for a different reason, they said we need to refer her to another hospital, and she came uh -huh. to. What our was? Hospital. Yeah. What was her main presentation? Complaint? Main presentation is uh, uh, she's a little bit and globe dys uh, dystopia, as you can see. Is it clear yeah, for you? Clear, yeah. And that started yeah, the, almost... The globe is pushed uh, almost down. Yeah, down Correct. And, and this started yeah. three, uh, three days ago, prior to her, I mean, three days prior to her presentation to the private hospital. Yeah. Uh, any and other she, associated symptom? Systemic uh, manifestation, diseases? She's not known to have a problem before. Mm -hmm. And she's originally, uh, I think, from Pakistan. I think so. Yeah, any contact with sick patients? I'm not aware of. Uh, okay, uh, is there an infection of the vision during this attack? And is it no. the first time? The first time? Uh, she has a little bit double vision because the globe is pushed down. Yeah. Otherwise, she's okay. Okay. Uh, I would go to the examination and I will take the uh, vision, the uh, color of vision. ABD, extra uh, I will examine for uh, the lacrimal gland. I will try to avert it and uh, see the site or superior temporal, the site of the lacrimal gland. Is it inflamed? Uh, is it enlarged? Uh, is it palpable? Uh, also, I will examine the fundus. Uh, yeah, examination showed just mild limitation of upgaze, uh, fundus exam, uh, slit lamp examination. Uh, the lacrimal, so, yeah. The lacrimal like gland, uh, is it, yeah? It's normal. Bulbable? Normal. No, no, normal. Okay. It's not uh, a collapse. Yeah, I will see a uh, cyst for proptosis also, and this okay. such cases, because uh, on down gaze image, I mean, in the down, uh, in the right photo, it looks like the left eye is more proptotic. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And then I will proceed to imaging. Okay, your CT scan. Okay, uh, I see in this uh, CT scan, uh, uh, soft tissue window, I see the left uh, nasal cavity, uh, homogeneous mass uh, that is uh, extending to the orbit uh, uh, in both, in all section, uh, uh, coronal and the axial section. Uh, and it's homogeneous uh, and uh, well circumscribed. So what do you and think? Other, uh, I think this is a nasal problem extending into the nose uh, and into the orbit. The orbit. Okay, what yeah. do you think? Either it could, uh, she's 40, uh, so it could be uh, some sort of tumor. Uh-huh. Or it could be sinusitis uh, with uh, orbital importance of periosteal abscess. So what do you think? Patient is in front of you. Mm. I would think of infectious uh, processes, through, especially she is from a poor country. But it why do you think contact. it's infectious process? Cro the eye is a little bit uh, injected and uh, can you look at the eye again? Is it injected? Ah, it's a, it's quiet. So I don't think it's inflammatory rather than uh, some uh, uh, tumor process, either benign or mostly benign. Okay, the duration is three days. So do you think that will go with tumor? This is one mm -hmm. other thing. Yeah. And I yeah. want you to look look carefully at that. This is subperiosteal, so yeah. subperiosteal collection. What is the nature of it? Is, is it a soft tissue or a more of, um, let's say, a fluidish things? Or is it, you uh, think it's a mass? It's, it's more of soft tissue. Yeah, is it a mass like a muscle? Or it's no, different? No. It's more of a fluid. Yeah. 
So, and also when, why I'm, I'm bringing this one attention, you can see the orbit is clear. Matthew sign of inflammation yeah, for yeah. tissue, in a side. So it's more yeah, really localized to that area, nose and sub, uh, superior nasal. Correct. So what you see, what's this? We call it bone. Bone destruction or bone. Bone defect. Yeah, and the patient defect. has something here, and there is a bone defect and went from here. Is, from it, the yeah, is, it, yeah, is it like a mucosal? This is a mucosal, okay. Yeah. This is a mucosal. It's not an infection. So how you treat yeah. this patient? Uh, this was the nasal uh, sinus uh, surgery. Yeah, it needs to be referred to ENT yeah. for yeah, the training. This is a video, Dr. Walid Allah Yatil Afi Kam Mujud Fil Amariyat Wa Khadlin Al Video Hada. Dr. Saad Al Saleh. This is the defect in the orbital bone. Mm -hmm. So this is a defect I was showing you in the CT scan. This is that moidal sinus. Yeah, yeah, very clear, very clear. So okay. Case, do they put something in that area, I mean, or it might be No, it's, they will open it. The sinus will be open, mm -hmm. so the mucus will not accumulate again. Ah. This is the treatment, is to open the sinus that's being closed. Because why mucosal happen? Because there is obstruction or the, the, the affected sinus, the drainage will be obstructed, so the mucus will be uh, back accumulated. Yeah. accumulated. That's why we're opening the sinus is a treatment. Yeah, clear. Clear? Yes. Okay, so I'm This is to highlight how you differentiate between is it infectious process or not infectious process. What the CT scan of the orbit is clean. ما هو ما هو انفليمد مقارنه بالحاله اللي قبل لما تشوفون اول طفله سو شفناها تشوفون الاوربت هنا هذا السبر يستلعب وتشوفون الادجستنت تيشيو انفليمد الحاله اللي قبل شوي ما كان انفليمد ابدا معناته انه مو اتس نوت ساينوسايتس اتس نوت ان اوربت ساينوسايتس كلير صح؟ يس فيري كلير But there's a question before, when you asked the patient before, can we do a biopsy? It's good, we can do a biopsy, especially if there is a lack of gland involvement or muscle involvement, you can do. And this patient, the patient I showed you, he refused a biopsy and he improved with the steroids. So we continue only with the medical treatment with the most likely diagnosis than a definitive diagnosis. Prof, I have a question for this case. Go ahead. Uh, how frequent? that mucosal will present with such acute presentation? Uh, we, we see it يعني, more very common, but I've seen maybe six or seven cases so far. But the typical presentation is slowly progressive tosis. Uh, proptosis, true. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And, and, uh, and typically more of anterior representation, this patient presented with a posterior uh, involvement of that moidal sinus. Most of the uh, mucosal we see from the anterior ethmoidal sinus. So this is a middle ethmoidal sinus. And why, why I brought this one just to you know, discuss how you read the CT scan, how you differentiate between what's the content and etc. Uh, but in this case, in this case, if we did MRI, it will be with us or it will not I don't think it will make a difference. Uh, what, what MRI really good for to show you the mucus? If there's a weight MRI, the mucus has, uh, has a different, has a certain or well-known behavior, it will be lighter more. It will be uh, intense in MRI. So if you, if you have a nasal uh, mass and you don't know is it a mucus or, or a tumor, do MRI. When you do MRI with a T1, with a T2, sorry, it will be bright. So it will help you differentiate, is, is it a mucosal or something else? Clear? Yes, clear. Prof, there is a question from Dr. Ahiba. She says, uh, after drainage, if there is a continuous compartment between the sinuses and the orbit, does it increase the risk for infection? Ahiba, uh, how are you? طبعا 
طبعا تو انسر هي كويشن اف يو دو ا سي تي سكان افتر 3 اور سي 5 مانث وات يو ار غانا سي وات دو يو ثينك رمان ذير ويل بي سوفت تيشو كلودينج ذا سبيس كلودينج ذا سبيس ديفكت يوجوالي The mucus will come. Uh, the uh, the epithelium will close. Now, what happens once you have um, uh, orbital uh, the periorbita intact, and you just remove the mucus seal, the bone will reform again. And you remember we talked about it's really important for bone healing. So when you when you واضح الصورة شباب ولا أو عند هيبة المشكلة. ال ال لما يكون البريستيم انتاكت البون وي ريفورم ذا جيم سبحان الله الله مبرمج البريستيم انه يساعد البون تو ذا ديفكت تو هيل باي اتس سيلف يعني لو تعيد الايمج بعد فرضا خمس شهور او ست شهور البون ديفكت هنا بي بيكون هيلد اب واضح؟ مهند واضح بروف واضح للزملاء كلهم ايش قاعد تتكلم عنه؟ ف يعني وجود البريوستيم انتاكت ويل هيلب ذا بروموت ذا بون هيلينج ان ذيس اريا اوكي عشان كذا ما تذكرون اذا احد حضر اوربيتال ديكومبريشن ممكن تذكر مهند لما سوينا الحاله بنهايه الحاله وي نيد تو اوبن ذا بريوستيم صح؟ صحيح برو واي تو اوبن ذا بريوستيم فور فور تو ريزونز اول شيء ذا فات تو جو انتو ذا ساينسز The other reason is to interrupt the periosteum in that area because if you have the periosteum intact, the bone will regrow again. واضح شباب؟ I think it's clear, Prof. Yes. Uh, Prof. Alatiklati, can you just repeat the point regarding uh, opening the periosteum for the decompression surgery? Uh, when we do orbital decompression, we, we open the periosteum so the fat or the orbital content will herniate inside the sinuses. Because if you don't open the periosteum, the tissue will not herniate freely inside the sinuses. The other reason is to open the periosteum so the bone defect will not, uh, uh, let's say, uh, or the defect we created will not be prepared, will not be repaired by the periosteum. Wadah <laughs> Dalal? Yes. باقي سؤال ونروح الحالة اللي بعدها مهند نو مور كويستشنز بروف نبغى نبغى ار 3 نبغى ار 4 الحالة شوي اللي بعدها يبغى لها ار 4 في احد يتطوع ولا السلام عليكم بروف السلام ورحمة الله حياك الله كل عام وانتم بخير وانت بخير يا رب يعطيك العافيه. سؤال بس دكتور ايش ممكن هنا يكون الديفرنشال دياجنوز دكتور غير الميكوسيل في هذه الحاله؟ ما في الا ميكوسيل. اتس اتس نوت ا تيومر اتس نوت ا كيوت ساينس ثمويدا ساينسايتس اتس ا ميكوسيل. في بعض الاحيان يو كانت ذير از نو اذر ديفرنشال دياجنوز. خاصه اف يو لوك اف يو لوك كليرلي هير ذيس از ا ميكوسيل. And as, as we just talked before, if you are not sure, you can do MRI, it will show you that it's a mucus. This is not allergic because it's only isolated um, uh, sinus. Sometimes they call it, it's maybe a differential, but it's not our area, uh, maybe a fungal ball, but it doesn't come like this, a fungal ball in the sinuses. So it has a different feature. So in this one, it's a mucosil, nothing else. في اي سؤال ثاني شباب؟ طيب نبغى ار فور مهند ها شباب في احد فولنتير؟ دكتور حمود العتيبي اذا موجود اوه انعم واكرم السلام عليكم سلام هلين دكتور حمود كل عام وانتم بخير انتم بخير صحه وسلامه ان شاء الله يعطيك العافيه يا رب بارك الله فيك علينا وعليك بارك يا كريم uh, حمود this patient he came to you because he noticed the swelling if you can see it off or under the brow between the eyeball and the brow in his left eye yes. that's been there for almost more than six or seven months and he came for To you just see what's going on and does it need to be treated? 
So what do you think? Um, <clears throat> so uh, first of all, I have uh, to take a good history uh, about the, the onset. Uh, was it sudden or gradual? Uh, the duration, uh, was there any uh, diplobia, uh, associated symptoms with it, like decreased vision, diplobia, pain. Um, I would ask about any history of upper respiratory tract infections. Uh, does it increase with valsalva? Uh, is it pulsatile? Um, if there is uh, any past history of uh, any medical condition, uh, any recent traumas, any uh, all the surgeries or any surgeries recently, um, history of malignancies, um, if he has a thyroid condition also. That's very good. Mashallah, Alec, you ask so many things. But you know, just a point I just want to make clear to the viewers, because especially if you are an exam, if you pre present it with something, ask some things that's really related to this condition. Are you familiar? Yeah. Yeah, and for example, um, thyroid is maybe is not related to this condition. Yes. Uh, malignancy for a seven months history doesn't go with malignancy. Yeah. But it's good to have it's it diplobia. in your mind. Yeah. yeah, diplobia, yes. But it's good to have it in your mind and ask some things related to the, to the patient. Uh, if there is pain, if there is pain with it, uh, does it, uh, or painless, uh, um, does it affect the motility of the eye? Um, uh, recent upper respiratory tract infection out like conjunctivitis. Um, yeah, this patient is yeah. having it for seven months. It's uh, it's, it's painless. Just the, the the way it appears was bothering him. All the best medical history is negative. Um, okay. Um, so I will uh, start with the examination. I will check okay. the visual acuity. I will check the visual acuity of the patient. Uh, optic nerve function, um, color vision, uh, about six Ps, uh, as we mentioned, the pain, the, the, uh, progression, apoptosis, and the periorbital area. Is it pulsatile or not pulsatile? And I will tell patient also of the lesion to see uh, the consistency of it. Is it liquid or firm mass? Um, does it move? Is it mobile or not? And uh, yeah, so I will go with um, yeah. After the complete examination, dilated from this exam, I will proceed with the. Uh, That's imaging. very good. Exam just show uh, what looks like a mass. You cannot really check if there is a fluid or not because it's a little bit deep, uh, mobile a little bit. Um, it's not tender and uh, there is no proptosis. Uh, uh, rest of uh, eye examination is normal. Yes. And somebody asked about filler, no filler injection before, which yeah. is a good question to ask. Would you ask uh, f about fillers in True. males? Uh, you can, you, sometimes you don't know. <laughs> okay, so it's, I'll it's proceed with keep, image. Yeah, it's good to keep yeah. it in mind. Sometimes you get surprised yeah. by things that you don't expect. Okay. Okay. But it's a filler is really important, it's good to keep it in mind. This is the imaging. Okay, so <clears throat> this is um, CT um, showing soft tissue window. Um, uh, axial uh, cuts and coronal cuts. The, on, there is an artifact, um, maybe a foreign body or something, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, that's from the history. Okay. Um, so on, um, the left eye and uh, the Axial cuts uh, shows uh, th that the periorbital looks a little bit swollen, and there is like a mass. Um, I'm not sure if it's extraconal, extraconal mass, maybe at the lacrimal gland area. This is the mass. You see it here. This is the lacrimal gland that's normal appearing. Okay. This is the other lacrimal gland, and this is what you are behind. Yeah. You see it. So it looks like. Yeah, you see I see. Here, uh, it, it, irregular in shape. Regular or regular? You see this one? So, you know, yeah. No, it looks regular. Okay. And yeah. what do you think inside? Do you see what's inside of it? Do you think it's more of a mass, a fluidish, something like that? Um, 
most probably, I think, uh, mass could be uh, vascular in origin. Why you think um, it's vascular? Honestly, I would uh, yeah, yeah, see with uh, um, with contrast to, to to judge if it's vascular or not. Yeah, this is with contrast, by the way. The CT scan oh. with contrast. You can see the blood vessels here. Yeah. Do you see them? So yeah. it's not enhancing. Yes, it doesn't look uh, vascular. Obviously. And I want you to, to focus, yeah, focus inside. You see the inside of it? It's, is it like very dense or you think maybe a fluid containing? I think, uh, I'm not sure what I'm seeing with my eye. The image in, in front of me looks uh, uh, hypo-intense. Hypo yeah, it's more um, of a fluid ISO, containing. Yes, yes. It's more of a fluid containing. It created much effect, but it's more of a fluid containing. So and what there you is, think? Uh, in the coronal section, there is uh, like a dystopia of the globe, uh, as mm -hmm. you can see in the coronal section. A little bit, but if you notice, Dr. Mahmoud, that the patient tilted a little bit, right? When you notice the bone here and the bone here, it's tilted the image. Do you agree with me? Yes, I agree with you. Yeah, it's more of tilting than... Uh, and also you can see here there's something enlarged here in this area. Do you see it? Yes. And with this one? So what do you uh, think? I would think of uh, cavernous hemangioma, maybe. That's good. Um, what else? Um, I mean, um, uh, I would rule out like uh, lacrimal gland uh, related uh, lesions away, away from the lacrimal gland, lymphomas or lymphoproliferative disorders in general. Um, let us let us think about something. This is we told we talk about it's it's mainly fluid containing lesion, okay? So it's not cavernous hemangioma. What do you think? Lymphangiomas maybe. In this area. Schwannomas. Schwannoma, that's very good. Cystic schwannoma, that's very good. What Lymphans else? Lymphangiomas. A lymphangioma, yeah, but lymphangioma typically doesn't come with the clear cyst like this. It's more, it's mainly like a, a lesion that it's it's ill-defined or it's maybe irregular. Cyst like maybe hydrated cyst or cyst. Maybe, or yeah, it can be in, in, inflammatory cyst or uh, non-inflammatory. That's very good. What else? Yeah. Um, maybe mitts, metastasis or something. So some sort of this is, yeah, but will not stay for seven months like this, so? Yeah. And will not be fluid, fluid containing with the regular lesion like this. I agree with you. What else? Well, as I said, the lacrimal gland uh, tumors. Um, no, I, I would uh, say since you're talking about the lacrimal gland, can be dicrops because we can have accessory lacrimal glands here, yeah. isn't it? So dicrops yes. is one of the differential. Uh, you mentioned schwannoma, cystic schwannoma, cystic neurofibroma, uh, dicrops. Yes. Cavernous hemangioma, yeah, but with the appearance of con fluid containing, it will be less likely. Yeah. What else? Hydrated Dagging. cyst. Hydrated cyst, that's very good. What else? Uh, cystocercosis. Cystocercosis, that's really good. Um. <clears throat> Maybe varices. Varices will not come with defined lesion like this. It can be hydrocystoma. Yeah, maybe dermoid. dermoid. Der dermoid, that's really good. Hydrocystoma. And other thing, maybe we'll finish up with bilimetrixoma. Anything close to the eyelashes would come with the cyst-like. Also, we need to consider the neurofibroma, bilimetrixoma. This is more, mainly the differential diagnosis. Okay. Yes. So how do you ask patient? Um, maybe I will, I will try surgical biopsy. 
Yeah, we did the surgical the excision. Yes. And this is a penis. He has like a small cyst. This is a big one. This is a small one. Maybe I'll show it to you in the image. This is a big one. And he has a small okay. one here. And this came to be a neurofibroma, cystic neurofibroma. Yeah. Clear? Yes. So uh, I'm presenting this one just to think about what could be the differential diagnosis here with the cystic-like lesion, and these are the main differential diagnosis. We mentioned about dicrops, somebody mentioned ectopic lacrimal gland, can be dicrops from accessory lacrimal gland, and we've seen a good number of patients, maybe five or six like this. Any question, Dr. Hamoud? في أي سؤال على الحالة هذه شباب؟ الهاي ريفليكتيف هذه ارتفاكت فروم ذا تيث يا عبد السلام. طبعا في سؤال تقول واي اتس فلويد كونتيننج لما تشوف الماس نفسها هذه هي الماس وتشوف اللي جوا اتس مور اوف فلويد اتس نوت سوفت تيشو يعني نشوف اللي هنا مقارنة باللي هنا هذا شوي دارك هذا برايتر أكثر. الانتنسيتي هنا شوي اقل الانتنسيتي هنا اعلى فعشان كذا اتس مور اوف فلويد كونتيننج عشان تقارنها فرضا ناظر هذا وناظر هنا ناظر الفلويد هنا وناظر المنطقه اللي تلقاها شوي اقل انتنسيتي كومبير تو ذا سراوندنج عشان كذا اي سيد اتس فلويد كونتيننج طيب مهند نبغى ار 3 دلال Yes, sir. Dr. Dalal, yes, sir. Can I ask you just a question regarding this case before? What What is it? Uh, I just have a question regarding this case. When we were What's mentioning the differential diagnosis, uh, some of them we mentioned uh, vascular lesions. Uh, wouldn't they be more uh, contrast enhancing? True. That's why I didn't consider vascular lesion. Mm. Okay. But that, that's more of isolated cystic lesion. We mainly come to mind just to summarize it up. You think about hydrocystoma, uh, dicrops, uh, ectopic um, from the um, accessory, accessory lacrimal glands, uh, neurofibroma, uh, schwannoma, cystic schwannoma, cystic neurofibroma, uh, dermoid cyst. Yeah, I will consider it, but it's not going to be the top differential because it's not in the uh, in the what you call it the suture line. But it can be one of the differential um, infected or uh, inf infected cyst, for example. Cystocercosis. But with his condition, I would not think much about inf infected uh, cyst because it's been there for several months. Okay. Sure. Uh, this patient uh, is having the problem in his left eye for a long time. And he, he, uh, he came to know that you just finished your uh, training and he came to you for your opinion since you are well trained now. And uh, his condition has been there for many years. He has uh, a little bit decreased vision because of malposition of the globe for many years. So what do you want to ask him and what, what, what do you think you can help him with? Okay, so uh, as we said here, this year old male presents with change of position of the eye for 10 years. So I can see here clearly in the image that he's having um, the, it's having dystopia of the left eye, uh, mainly uh, the eye is being pushed inferiorly. Uh, with, I think there is also totally a proptosis of that eye. I would like to know if he had, um, uh, if he had any intervention done to his eye, if he had any surgeries. Um, uh, how did it start? Did it start uh, all of a sudden? Was it progressive? Uh, did he have any, um, um, uh, any other like, eye before? Um, I you know, if you have uh, in that eye. Uh, the doctor. Hello. Um,
واضح دكتورة أحس أحسن الحين أحسن طب تستو سمرايز هي حد سأل وش سؤال وش الكيبيشن هو راعي راعي في الغنم جالس كده مبسوط ما عنده أي مشكلة أهم جاء أحد وقال والله في دكتورة كويسة باك تشوفها هو جاء ما سوى عمليات قبل كذا ما سوى أي شيء عايش حياته سنين طويلة بالعين بالشكل هذا Okay, so I'd like to examine the eye. I'd like to know the vision of this eye. Um, uh, if there's anything like um, uh, any lim limitation of movement in this eye, any if it's frozen, if the globe is uh, um, it's intact, if there's um, any signs of uh, um, examination any, like, of the eye, uh, the motility is okay. He has a proptosis, no afferent papillary defect. The vision is 20 of her, I think. 20 over uh, 80 in the left eye. And it's been stable. He's but not noticing that it's progressing or worsening. No, no. Okay. Um, I think I would like to um, go to imaging of the patient just to see the integrity of the, of the area, the globe. This is the motility just to show you. This is imaging. This one and this one, if you'd like to see. Okay, so I can see here the we there is um, okay, so I can see here this is an MRI imaging of the of the patient um, with a with a very uh, large lesion almost occupying half the uh, half the globe, which is um, uh, which is hyper uh, hyper intense uh, on uh, I think this is a T one imaging is clear. And it's like multi-lobulated legion. Uh -huh. I can't see the extent of it. Um, okay, so it's late. What do you think, Dr. Adalal, is going on with him? I'm not sure. I, I want to see the. It could be like a fungal legion. It's, you know, it cannot be fungal with this so many years. Mm. So, what can you describe the region more? So, it's lobulated, uh, going in intraconal, extraconal, and what's the content? Okay, so it's it's a, yeah, it's a lobulated. It's definitely intraconal legion, and um, it it's hyper hyper intense. It's intraconal, um, extraconal so it's, again. Uh, it's not only intraconal. I think it's more having. Yes. And what's yes, the content? Okay, Is so it yeah. mass, soft tissue, fluid? Um, it's soft tissue with fluid. So because it's hyper hyper intense with the uh, yeah, you see the globe as, and as you see the spine. globe. Yeah, as intense, yes. So what do you think? Um, I'm not really sure it can be the differential of this. Um, so, so I have an intracornal, extracornal uh, containing fluid. Um, um, so I think of something like it's vascular maybe, like it could be um, a varices. Um, um or yeah or I think it's not it's not well it's not well defined so I don't think it's like cavernous um it's like it's not a cavernous hemangioma um I'm not sure if it could be like a, a lymphangioma maybe or a venous malformation so if I ask you to give me one differential diagnosis or one diagnosis what do you think is most likely I think it's going more of lymphovenous malformation yeah, it's it's mainly lymph lymphatic malformation, and I cannot see yeah. calcification. And you see, mm -hmm. it is more dilated. If you can see the the yeah. the, the vessels itself are more dilated. This goes more with the lymphatic yeah. vessels. The lymphatic. Yeah. yeah. So the, and also, if you can see it here, you can see it dilated. Even here, you can see it dilated. Yeah. This is more mm -hmm. of uh, lymphatic uh, lymphatic malformation. Okay, so because there's no calcifications, I'm thinking more 
because it's more there's no calcification i think more of lymphatic than lymphovenous is that correct so if, if there is calcification you would think mm -hmm. about uh, venous component طبعا if you want to see real calcification you need to do a ct scan mm, okay but, but i cannot see a defect that can the same point to calcification but if you look at the configuration it's more of large dilated uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, lesion which is more suggestive of lymphatic than uh, venous malformation but it can be like a predominant venous lymphatic with a little bit venous that's okay but it's mainly lymphatic malformation mm -hmm. you agree yes yes i think it's it's more than for venous but uh because في أي سؤال دكتورة دلال؟ أيوة معك في أي سؤال؟ سؤال من الزملاء واضح ال lymphatic malformation why we say it's lymphatic malformation واضح مهند؟ واضح بروف لكن السؤال في ال differentiation عنده history بروف lymphatic malformation will not enlarge with vasal varices correct yeah will not enlarge in venous if we did imaging before and after Vazava, we noticed with itself, it can be enlarging true but with the pattern of enlargement and the size of enlargement this is more of lymphatic malformation than venous malformation mm -hmm. venous malformation to, to be tend to be more uh, lymphatics and also more of a soft tissue uh, lesion than a fluid containing lesion with the had more of a fluid containing lesion which that's why you think it's lymphatic uh, prof, uh, can this patient present with acute presentation uh, after it can. tract infection? It can. If there is a acute bleed, like the lymphatic, it can present. What about in case of infection, a respiratory tract infection, the lymphoid tissue inside this lesion? Will it? It can. Uh, not much. It may be associated with the acute presentation, but it's not with every aberrant right tract infection that it will enlarge, no. It's, this is one of the inciting factor, but it's not a, a typical uh, presentation that uh, with each aberrant right tract infection, they will have inflammation or increase in the size of lymphatic vessels, no. Uh, prof, with this chronicity, any problem? It's ten years. Uh, it's not uh, own question, it's, it's 10 years now. Will it cause changes in the bony orbit? Uh, sometimes, yes, a little bit, not much. But then one of the proposed treatment for this one is to do orbital decompression to go, to get the eyeball back. This is one of the indications for non-thyroid orbital decompression. But will not change much. They will not say, will not change, will not cause significant bone remodeling. Uh, yes, Prof. In, in this case, uh, is this the usual scenario where it's that long and it's not changing well, uh, maybe because he's a poor historian? Or would this be a common scenario of how it would uh, This is a common scenario. The lymphatic vessels is different. It depends on the, uh, the extensive of the lesion in the orbit. Sometimes it can be limited. Sometimes it can be widespread. This patient is a widespread. So it's, it's typical presentation if, uh, if it's involving the whole orbit. Okay. Thank you. Mohanad, we have an R4. Do you have anyone who is in Dr. Badr al-Gahtani. Badr, my friend. How are you? 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 Brother, this is um, I think he is 38 year old male. He came to you because um, people were telling him there is his change in his uh, eye and the left eye. His wife, um, seven or eight months, and also he started observing that with the uh, in the mirror. Uh, otherwise, he doesn't have any eye problem apart from the eyes changing in the position, as you can see in the in the picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you think? 
uh, okay. Uh, first of all, as I see from the picture, there is uh, like um, uh, an upper orbital mass in the left eye with a little bit uh, dystopia uh, inferiorly. Uh, I would like to ask how long uh, this mass was there uh, and this change in the picture um, uh, for how long. Uh, I would like to ask if there is uh, uh, any previous uh, history of any medical illness or any surgery before. Uh, I would like to ask also if there is any uh, associated symptoms like uh, uh, weight loss or anorexia or fever. Uh, also, uh, I would like to rule out also infectious uh, causes like uh, history of contact uh, or uh, travel. Um, uh, also, I would like to ask about uh, if there is any uh, double vision complaint or decrease in vision uh, to roll out any uh, compressive lesion on the optic nerve. Um, That's good. So uh, uh, I agree with you when you go and the patient has been symptomatic for seven months, so we think more of about benign lesions. And mm -hmm. we ask exactly what you mentioned about previous surgery, trauma, a history of double vision, decreased vision, etc. All these are negative. Okay. Um, uh, after that, I will proceed to the uh, examination. Uh, I need uh, to check the visual acuity, uh, IOP, uh, pupils, uh, and ABD. Uh, also, I need to assess the uh, motility of the uh, extraocular muscle movements. Uh, and uh, finalizing my exam by uh, examining the fundus. Uh, uh, examination showed only proptosis. The rest of examination was normal. Okay, so I need to uh, request a CT scan uh, to uh, assess the orbit. MRI, right? Okay, that's fine. Uh, okay, this is a coronal section of uh, MRI. Um, almost like this is T1. Uh, what I can see there is like. Um, uh, MS involving the lacrimal uh, uh, area. Uh, it is uh, hyper uh, hyper dense mass, uh, uh, lupulated. Um, it is not like uh, well defined. It is uh, like a heterogeneous from inside. Um, okay. Then. Um, there is like uh, also a molding uh, superiorly and uh, at the temporal side. So there is a bone remodeling. Yes, there is also bone remodeling. I agree. So what do you think? This yeah, is this another cat if you want to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is uh, a coronal, uh, uh, this is sorry, an axial uh, MRI uh, scan. Uh, it confirms what we said about the location of the mass and the heterogeneity of the mass, uh, bone modeling uh, in that area. Um, uh, with this picture, it looks like um, a sphenoid wing uh, meningioma is uh, my top differential diagnosis. So what's the nature of the mass, Pedro? Um, uh, what do you mean by the nature of the mass, Prof? Is it soft tissue or fluid containing, or what is it? Most likely it is a soft tissue. This is soft tissue. This is soft mm -hmm. tissue, or no? This is soft tissue muscle, sir. Ah, okay, yes. This is uh, not. Exactly, it is different in color. Mm -hmm. um, it might be a stioma. No, this is, like is really in interesting. Um, <clears throat> typically, when you do MRI, we ask for fat suppression, sir. Huh? Yes, exactly. This is a T1 without fat suppression. So you can see mm -hmm. the fat here. And this is a little bit uh, a lesion, and the T2, T1 was fluid containing. See the fluid? Mm hmm. And the teeth in the in the um, and also with the oh, that fat separation is bright a little bit. So what do you think is going on? 
you see the cyst here? Oh, exactly, yes. This is with fat suppression. You can see the fat is suppressed, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is without fat suppression. Mm. And the location here. So what do you think? Then something chronic, not acute. Might be a um, uh, dermoid. I would That's very good. Dermoid cyst. Dermoid will be deep, one. Deep, yeah, deep dermoid cyst. Because it's, uh, you know, this is a location of uh, sphenoid with the, uh, uh, with the uh, zygomatic suture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is yeah. a typical uh, location for deep dermoid cyst. When you say something bright with the, uh, with the T1, it's, it's with, especially without fat suppression, indicating the, con the containing, containing something similar to the fat because of the uh, container of the dermoid cyst is a little bit turbid and sometimes they have a uh, lipid containing and this is that that's why this is a bright in T1 without fat suppression. Mm. Oh, okay. I so see. this is very likely dermoid cyst from the imaging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's assume that is a let's assume that is is a soft tissue for example. If it's a soft mm. tissue with this Lung history and bone remodeling. What's your difference? Uh, okay, with this location, I have to rule out lacrimal, um, uh, lacrimal gland tumors. Uh, yeah, namely, okay. namely bilimorphic, okay? Bilimorphic adenoma, exactly. Yeah, yes. because yeah. it's been there for a long time. But this appearance with this fluid containing and the location is more a deep dermoises. So what's the treatment? In this case, I have to do uh, total excision. Yeah, we have to do total excision. That's very good. You know, mm -hmm. if, you, if we don't do a total uh, excision, the patient will come with a recurrence. Exactly. The problem with the recurrence is difficult to manage, then it will be the inflamed area, and it's very difficult to excise it later on when the area is inflamed. And I think both, uh, total excision will help us to avoid the granulation. Formation. True. I agree. Do you know having epithelial lining, epithelial uh, part of the wall, which is epithelial lined deep inside, will incite inflammation and also uh, maybe sometimes discharge fistula formation and other complications. Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? Take an half, Prof. Prof, in this case, uh... Any relatively posterior lateral uh, lesion, if you want to go for total excision. Uh, what's the approach, Prof? Will you remove the lateral orbital wall? No, this one we didn't remove. Let's crease incision first. Uh, lateral let crease. Yeah, lateral let crease, and we excise it completely. Mohanad. I'm looking for Dr. Sleiman Tregi. Sleiman, it's Adli Mastak. Salam alaikum. Salam, hello, Allah. Alhamdulillah, Allah is the Allah is the Allah is well, this is uh, this is a 38 year old gentleman. He came to you because of the swelling in the uh, in the left eye that started almost uh, maybe I think eight eight months ago, and slowly increasing. Okay, so it's a, uh, it's a bit less. Okay. Okay, so we'll start with the history. I will ask about uh, presence of uh, you mentioned painless. Yes. I was ask about uh, presence of uh, uh, diplopia, uh, like I'm seeing an external photo of uh, adult male with uh, uh, dystopia of the left eye, uh, erythema and uh, lid swelling uh, over uh, mainly the upper eyelid with mild lid swelling uh, of the lower eyelid. Um, so in the history, I'll ask about uh, 
the progression is it uh, increasing in, si in size like uh, uh, aggressively or it's mildly increasing in size uh, slowly slowly increasing slowly. is it uh, worsening with upper respiratory tract infection is it uh, uh, worsening with valsalva no uh, is there any uh, a previous uh, similar episode in the past like when he was child in the other eye why why you ask this question uh, because uh, sometimes in lymphophenous malformation such a uh, presentation might be recurrent and sometimes it resolves oh, okay you know it's just been there and slowly increasing okay uh, is there any history of uh, fever no. Okay. Um, is there any history of uh, trauma, uh, surgery, sinus disease, dental infections, uh, dental procedures? Uh, no, but I don't. I don't think that's much relative, uh, relevant. And it's it's a chronic disease, chronic condition. It's not an acute condition. And how about systemically? How is he? Is there any uh, medical? He's healthy. No, he's healthy. Otherwise. Okay, so I'll start uh, examination. I will check the IOV, vision, extracular motility, I'll check for ABD, I will check for color vision, visual field, and I'll proceed to uh, palpation of the lesion itself to see is it soft, hard, mobile, fixed, is it uh, attached to the uh, uh, adjacent tissue or uh, freely mobile, the, I mean the uh, supranasal part, mainly it has is it uh, like of fluid consistency or is it hard um, yeah yeah it's not painful it's a little bit mobile but you cannot go around it because a little bit deep not tender um it's it's not a it's not uh, it's not transilluminating that's it uh, then I yeah then, then I yeah, examine uh, all examination are normal Okay, then I will proceed to imaging. Okay, okay. Uh, this is a CT scan with a soft tissue window with both uh, a coronal and axial section uh, that shows uh, a mass with a soft tissue uh, consistency, uh, homogeneous, and uh, occupying. Uh, uh, that's mainly anteriorly, extra conal. Uh, that is uh, molding uh, on the uh, nasal aspect of the globe, mainly between, ma mainly between the globe and the lid. That's very good. So with, what you uh, with no uh, like. Uh, uh, does not there is no enhancing inside the, this mass. It's enhancing a little bit, sir. Then the the tissue here, compared tissue here. Yes. You see some enhancement, sir. Yeah, but I com I compared it with the uh, brain blood vessels, which seems more enhancing. It's more yeah, the brain, when you say enhancement, it's different. The enhancement is different. Can be mar uh, it can be really marked enhancement or little enhancement. Yes. So this one had a little enhancement, not marked enhancement like a blood vessels, yes. but it's more enhancing comparing the soft tissue around it, sir. Yes. You get my point? Yeah, yeah, clear. And it would show for the tissue here or tissue here. Had a more enhancing, sir. Yes, of course. But it's not marked enhancement. Yes. Anyway, uh, the differential mainly would be a benign lesion, uh, uh, like I would think of, of uh, uh, vasc uh, vascular, maybe cavernous hemangioma. Uh, uh, maybe you think about it again. So we have a lesion that is molding around the eyeball. If you get something molding, what's most likely differential? Uh, maybe it's lymphatic, uh, uh, lymphatic origin. Not lymphatic, like, similar, uh, but lymphatic. 
مو لمفاتك قريب منها بس مو لمفاتك لايك وش قصدك بلمفاتك؟ اي مين لايك لمفوبلوريفريتيف ايوه تختلف لمفوبلوريفريتيف تختلف عن لمفاتك صح؟ يس يا لمفوبلوريفريتيف ذس اوردرز اي اجري ات كان بي لمفويد هايبربليجيا ات كان بي لمفوما ذس شود بي ذا ديفرنشال ذا توب ديفرنشال دايجنوستيك وذ ذس كرونيك في it's been there for several months and smolding um, homogenous this is lymphopenous I'm sorry lymphopenous disorders like lymphoma or lymphoid hyperplasia this is the most likely diagnosis there is other thing can be but this is most likely diagnosis you agree? yeah, yeah. so how you treat this patient? so in such case we have to like uh, Uh, work up the patient systemically uh, to make sure that it, this is a meta uh, metastasis. Plus, we, in, from orbital point of view, to establish the diagnosis, we have to like do incisional biopsy. Okay. So we did incisional biopsy and came to be um, lymphoma. Lymphoma. Yes. So we. Have have to uh, uh, like uh, refer to patient for oncologist to start uh, the treatment what treatment according to the stage of the of the lymphoma whether it is only limited to the orbit or to, it's uh, extending like uh, to other organs maybe uh, radio uh, therapy with chemo if it is metastasis On, uh, it's only the orbiter, we can treat him only with the radiotherapy. That's very good. So this patient, we uh, referred him to um, uh, oncologist. They did systemic workup. They didn't find any other uh, part of fault. And uh, by the way, he, he was uh, CD20 positive. Does that make a difference for you? Uh, maybe he will be responsive to rituximab. That's very good. So this is one of the things that you want to know about. Is this the 20 positive or not? But anyway, this way the patient was only, uh, I mean, they, they screened him, they didn't find any other location. And they, uh, they treated him with radiotherapy. And uh, this is his picture. He came to me maybe, I think, eight years after, after completing the radiotherapy, after, after the surgery. He was doing fine. And he came because of cataracts. So we did cataracts for him. And he's been like... So far, I'm following him for 20 years. He's okay. Okay. Any question? For me, it's clear. Take him out here. طبعا what's the prognosis? طبعا إذا كانت I localize orbital lymphoma, the prognosis is really good. يعني, uh, one of the things they say that lymphoma doesn't kill the patient. That this is even if systemic lymphoma, usually the patient will die from other common lymphoma itself. Especially if in, in the orbit and it's only isolated in the orbit, it's really kill, rarely kill the patient. So the patient, they have good prognosis, especially if it's localized in the orbit. Mohanad. <تصفيق> يس برو آه معلش بس في احد سال عن الكيمو ثيرابي، الكيمو ثيرابي اف سيستميك يس كيمو ثيرابي ويل بي جود تشويس، سبيشلي في سي دي 20 دي ويل جيف ريتكسيماب، اي هاف انذر بيشنت ويل سي دي 20 بس اي ديدنت شو هيم هير، دي ريسبوند نايسلي تو ريتكسيماب في سي دي 20 بس نبغى احد يجاوبنا السؤال الجاي نبغى ار 3 ار 3 ولا ار 4 عاد حمود دكتور حمود هلا دكتور اختار لنا واحد ار فور مهند برشناو حنا صعب دكتور ما في احد طب ما في احد يتبرع ولا ممكن دكتور نايف سليمان نايف في من موجود نايف السلام عليكم السلام هلا دكتور نايف يعطيك العافيه كل عام وانتم بخير والجميع ان شاء الله بخير خير. الله يجعل علينا وعليكم شهر خير وبركه يا رب اللهم امين اللهم امين دكتور نايف this patient 
came to you because he, he observed change in the vision and double vision and also a little bit decreased vision and pain in his right eye over, I think it was three weeks. Okay. Uh, so first of all, I'll start with the history. Uh, so the presentation is for three weeks. I'll ask the patient uh, if there's any associated pain, uh, any associated, uh, he's complaining of double vision. So any decrease in vision, uh, any previous similar uh, attack in the past, if he had any trauma or recent surgery before, uh, systemically, is he misery or is he having any uh, known uh, chronic illness? Uh, uh, then I will proceed with the uh, examination for the patient. Um, okay. إذا okay. كانت الوقت هايبر بلاجيا ألون يو كان أبزير أو يو كان جيف ثير راديو ثيرابي ديبنس إن ذا إن ذا ديسكاشن وذ ذا أنكولوجيست بوث بوث ويز أر أوكي سو إف إتس لينفويد هايبر بلاجيا ألون يو كان أبزيرف أند سي إف ذير إز أني ريكانس يو كان جيف راديو ثيرابي إف ذير إز نو ريكانس إف ذير إز نو ريكانس يو كان جاست أبزيرف وذ فولو أب إيفن إف يو جو يو دو راديو ثيرابي إتس أولسو إتس نات إتس إتس ون أوف ذا تريتمنت أوبشن فور لينفويد هايبر بلاجيا Okay, for this patient, uh, he has some pain, and you can see he has decreased vision, a little bit double vision, and you can see the motility is affected in the photo. Yes, yes. Uh, he has limited mainly uh, subreduction and adduction. Uh, to um, proceed with imaging, I would order a CT scan to uh, assess uh, the orbit. Okay, so uh, I can see uh, this is a CT scan, uh, soft tissue window, axial and coronal cuts. Uh, there is a, a well-defined uh, mass, almost similar or larger than the globe size, uh, intraconal, uh, that is um, slightly heterogeneous, uh, pushing the globe anteriorly and out. Uh, otherwise, the around bone looks fine, the sinuses are clear. Uh, yes, this is the CT findings I can see. What about this one? Yeah, there is a small uh, mass uh, uh, just uh, at the medial uh, wall, posterior, and the other uh, side as well, yes. Good. So what do you think? Uh, I think uh, since it's intracoronal well-defined mass, um, top of my differentials would be it could be cavernous hemangioma. Uh, it could be... Uh, 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 okay, let, let, just a minute, Naif. Can you go back to history? Sure. What, what uh, was the history? Yeah, history-wise, uh, I ask about the... Uh, YouTube. No, no. The presentation, yes. three weeks, there is yes. pain, marked limitation of motility. Uh, yes, um, could, be a, could be metastasis since it's, it's bilateral. Uh, so in history, we can ask uh, about uh, systemically the patient, does he have any uh, constitutional symptoms, fever, loss of weight, uh, um, uh, and... Uh, um, since it's, it's three weeks, uh, so, uh, and uh, it doesn't look like, uh, it doesn't look like an infectious um, cause. Uh, so. <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing I want to draw your attention to, you mm -hmm. see how big the mass is? Yes. And do you see how much the proptosis he has? Yes, clear. You see, do you see the proptosis so much or no? Yes, yes, very clear, Prof, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Uh, it's a origin, mainly. Huh? Could be a vascular origin mass. No, what I'm trying to say is that the mass is so big in the imaging, but the proptosis is not that Marked, okay. right? Yes, yes. Bro. So when you have a mass that's so big and in the orbit and it's not showing very marked proptosis similar to the mass itself, that means the mass is eating the orbit. Okay. You get the point? 
Yes, yes, Prof. Yeah. If something eating the orbit, what's most likely going to be? Could be malignancy. Malignancy. That's yeah. very true. Yeah. Yes. So with the three day, three weeks duration, bilateral, uh, with a little bit pain, this is most likely going to be. Um, it could be uh, lymphoma, or. Uh, no, it's metastasis. Or mets, yeah. Mets, most likely mets. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, especially with, as I told you, it's a big mass, not showing exactly equivalent to the mass size and the proptosis, with, especially with the, uh, with the three weeks duration or short duration and a little bit pain, this is metastasis and proof and otherwise. Clear. Well, uh, well clear, yes. Zumala. So when this patient is screened and we found to have uh, melanoma in the leg and that metastasis side to the orbit. Yes. Okay. Clear, Prof. يعطيك العافية. طبعا هو لما جانا ما كان يعرف انه لو ما شاء الله الريزنت اللي شافه في الامرجنسي مرة كان سمارت. ف هي لوكت اوفر اند هي فاوند ذا ليجن ان ذا ليج اند هي ذا بيشنت واز يعني هي ديدنت منشن ات اول اباوت ات بيكوز هي ثوت اتس نات ريليتد. اي سي. سو بروف كان ات بروجريس ان اونلي شورت دوريشن لايك ذس؟ يا ميتاسيس كان بروجريس كويكلي. اي سي. يعني typically metastasis it's a it's a form of malignant process. A malignant process within weeks has changed a lot. It's not a benign lesion. <clears throat> Any questions so far? And in this patient, we didn't uh, take a biopsy because it's clear for us it's a metastasis. Yes. Delal, uh, what's your question? He's asking about a picture, maybe external photo. For the leg? Uh, oh. I, I, I missed taking that one. The, 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 the melanoma was in the leg. Okay. طيب مهند هذه اخر واحدة من يبغى يجاوبنا عليها؟ في احد فولنتير؟ ولا انت مهند ما سالناك؟ مهند اي بروف يا This is a 12th duration you can see it here on this side Okay, so 12 year old girl presented with left eye proptosis for seven years yeah, so the onset, uh, Prof, I assume it was uh, insidious, slowly progressive over seven years. Uh, is, it yes. yeah. uh, is it associated with any uh, change in vision or any reported strabismus by the family? Uh, no. Uh, so the, uh, I want to ask if there is any systemic disorder, any uh, inherited uh, neurofibromatosis, or any uh, cafe or less spots present in the family members or the patient himself. That's very good. No, no double vision, by the way. So Just slowly progressive proptosis. Yeah, uh, I will think of a benign, uh, benign nature of this lesion as long as it's since uh, seven years. Uh, I, all I can see in the photo is the uh, almost fullness on the superior sulcus of the left eye. Uh, okay. Even the eyes looks ortho, uh, pupil looks similar. It does not indicate if there is any. Optic Just effect. to save time, let's go yeah. for imaging. This is her imaging. Okay. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is a CT scan, coronal view, uh, bone view CT scan showing uh, hyperosteotic region diffuse over the uh, superior orbital, uh, over the frontal bone actually on the uh, superior orbital wall. Uh, it's also the previous CT scan, it's diffuse uh, hyperosteotic lesions. It's true. Yeah. So uh, my top... Hyper or hypo? Uh, hyperosteotic, hyperosteotic lesions. Uh, okay, maybe we'll change your mind later on. Let's go. So it's less, less density than the bone itself, but uh, it's, uh, it's still uh, hyper, hyper dense compared to the soft tissue. Uh, 
I will uh, it's uh, showing inferior displacement of the orbit, but the uh, head is tilted as well, so I cannot uh, tell uh, for sure. So but what do you think? Uh, it's now we need a diagnosis. I then think this it's is diagnosis. Fibr fibrous dysplasia, Prof. Yeah, fibrous dysplasia. It's a typical presentation. What systemic disease do you think? Uh, if there is any the pigmented with endocrine abnormalities, I would think of McCune or Bright, especially in this patient, it is uh, polyosteotetic, not uh, mono. True, it's not uh, mono. That's very good. Excellent. This is what I want to say. Uh, Tom, the treatment for this one is just observation. You cannot go and do something major for it. Radiation therapy is not, it's been a trial, but it's not really that effective in these conditions. And you cannot excise all the spawn if uh, involved. So observation may be the best choice for this kind of uh, mass in this patient. Uh, Prof, I have a question regarding this case. Uh, what about uh, the reports that said there might be tendency to malignant transformation after uh, radiation therapy? That's case. true, especially for children. Any radiation at this age is a risk for malignancy. That's even true, for example, for uh, if you radiate radio, uh, uh, rhabdomyosarcoma or retinoblastoma, or etc. It's been it's been reported too. Especially, it's not curative. If it's curative, it's okay, but it's not curative. السلام عليكم يعطيك العافية بروف الله يعافيك يا رب وبالعكس خالد الشامر معك حياك الله يا خالد الله يسعدك يا رب بروف كويستشن خالد مو واضح السؤال ممكن تكتب خالد Prof. Khaled كتب السؤال هو اللي كيس يو في طبعاً how frequent it depends on the location. طبعاً it can happen in the face, it can happen in the extremities. It depends on the location and where, which bone is involved. ف how frequent I'm not aware. I mean, I'm not aware of. Maybe there is a study to look how frequent in the orbit as a presentation, but I'm not aware of a figure that I can give it to you. But it's, it depends on the location and which bone is involved. But how common is it? It's not that common. I've seen maybe three or four patients so far. It's not something really a lot, no. Face all tiny, Shabab. Prof, you mentioned something uh, when Dr. Mohanad mentioned hyperostotic lesion. The body is hyperostatic. Then what happened? The bone marrow is replaced by uh, fibrous tissue and enlarging. So it's not hyper. I mean, the, the, uh, to the bone itself, it's not hyperostatic. It's so more of an enlarging bone than hyperostatic. So the, the right description. Uh, it's what? more enlarging the bone space. Come on. I'll take a look, Doctor. There's a ground glass appearance, uh, Walid, which is the typical description. Thank you, Doctor. يعطيكم العافية جميعاً وشكراً على حضوركم ومرة ثانية كل عام وأنتم بخير وتقبل ربي منا ومنكم المسلمين جميعاً نلتقي على خير بإذن الله مع السلامة.